More than 80 House freshmen pose for a class photo in front of the U.S. Capitol ahead of orientation. The new Democrats in town also having to navigate a caucus divided over leader Nancy Pelosi's bid for speaker. They're not expected to pick up leaders until later on this month. Republicans will no longer control the House come January. Choose current majority leader Kevin McCarthy as the new minority leader, we're being told. While there is a lot of focus on the future this week, the current lame duck Congress has a number of issues to tackle. The top priority is avoiding a government shutdown after the 7th of December. Governor Brian Sandoval is preparing to leave office in two months, having never seen one of his vetoes overridden by the Nevada legislature. But thanks to a quirk of Nevada law, we may not know if his record will remain intact until after the lawmakers come together to convene next month. Politics Now co-host Steve Sebelius in studio right now to join us live and fully explain. Hi there, Steve. Hey, Brian. Well, you've heard of zombie bills. They die during the session, but they come back at the end. Well, these are purgatory bills. If a governor vetoes a bill after the legislature is adjourned for the final time, those bills return to the next session of the legislature two years later. There, the newly elected crop of lawmakers get one final chance to override the governor, who in this case will have left office by then. Fifteen of those bills, some controversial, remain in legislative purgatory. They concern everything from energy policy to criminal procedure to how many people have to man a freight train. Well, one of those bills, AB 175, which would have set minimum standards for health care for employers who want to pay a lower minimum wage. In Nevada, employers who offer health care to their workers can pay $7.25 per hour if they offer health benefits. Those who don't pay $8.25. But some employers were offering junk plans to their workers and paying a lower wage anyway. This bill would have mandated basic coverage, including emergency care, mental health care, and prescription drugs, in order to pay the lower wage. Another bill, AB 303, would have prohibited private prisons in Nevada and would have banned the state from contracting with private prisons outside the state by mid-2022. The bill's authors believe correction services should be run by state employees rather than for-profit prison companies. One of the most controversial bills by Sparks Assemblyman Mike Sprinkle would have let anybody, regardless of age, buy into the state's Medicaid program provided they paid the full cost of the service. Assembly Bill 374 was called Sprinkle Care in the legislature and would undoubtedly have added thousands of people to the Medicaid program, albeit without the subsidies that older or disabled people receive. And Senate Bill 106 would have gradually raised the state's minimum wage from its current level to $12 per hour over the course of five years. The bill would have increased costs for Nevada employers, although not as much as some cities that have set their minimum wage at $15 per hour. Although Democrats have a veto-proof majority in the state assembly, they're one vote short in the state Senate. That prompted incoming Senate Majority Leader Kelvin Atkinson to suggest there won't be any override votes when the legislature convenes in February. Uh, but no doubt about it, uh, we don't have the votes um, to override a veto right now. And, yeah. um, and, and I think uh, we just need to be honest about that um, and see, uh, and I'm, I doubt very, very seriously, and no disrespect to the minority leader, but um, why are they going to give us a vote to override a veto? So we've got to be realistic. Um, we've got to anticipate what fights are to come, and uh, we've also got to figure out which ones we're willing to um, put up a lot of yeah. fight about. I mean, it just may be easier to rehear some of those bills and, and pass them and send them as opposed to going that route. Well, that's actually not a bad strategy. While it takes two-thirds to override a governor's veto, the bills on the purgatory list could pass by a simple majority in the new legislature. That means that they'll face a decision not from Republican Governor Brian Sandoval, but newly elected Democratic Governor Steve Sisolak. Christiane? Thank you, Steve. I'll still ahead on the Valley's News Leader. Did you realize that Las Vegas is home to North America's largest recycling plant? Coming up in tonight's Living Green, Sherry Swen stops by the plant and tries her hand.